Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third grade. Happy Friday. Are you so excited that it's Friday? Me too. I was just checking out what I was going to be reading over the weekend. Do you ever do that and kind of plan what it is that you're going to do for the weekend? Okay, so here's mine. And I've seen this. I know it's a show, a, a movie, um, but this is an Enola Holmes mystery. And this one is called The Case of the Missing Marquess. And I don't know if you've seen Enola Holmes, but I know that Enola, if you spell it backwards, means alone. Hmm, I wonder what she's doing. She's also the little sister of Sherlock Holmes, which you know is a famous detective, right? So I imagine she's pretty smart. You might wanna check it out. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can check it out through your local uh, county library or go online and check it out with Sora. Now, speaking of Sora, this week, our top checkout school in Fresno Unified dun, 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 is Computech Middle School. So go Tigers, good job on all of your checkouts. I'm gonna put you up here in our top checkout schools. If you wanna see your school get up on our poster, it's super easy, all you need to do is check out books on Sora, and then we can add your school name to the list. Great job. All right, and then my last little bit of, of information, especially going into a Friday, if you've got all weekend to be able to do this, and it's super easy. If you want to have one of these super fun activity books, it's filled with things to draw, secret messages, science projects, all sorts of fun activities, super easy. See the address that's right there at the bottom of your screen? You just need to send me a note and say, hey, Mrs. Nix, here's what I'm reading in class, or here's something that I've learned. I'd love to share it with you. Maybe you found an idiom that we've been practicing all week and you'd like to share it with me. I'd love to be able to put one of these in the mail for you. Don't forget to include your address so I know where to send it to. All right, so let's get started today. I have three things that we're gonna go through and practice. We've got our R-controlled vowels, our prefixes, and then we're gonna finish off with some figurative language, which are called idioms today. Okay, let's get started. This week, we've been practicing our high-frequency words. You guys, I know, are champions with this. Let's go through and let's read them. Okay, ready? Must, much, myself, my, no, not, now, number, never, and new. Great job. So let's do our last two words for the week. Never, N-E-V-E-R, and new, N-E-W. Nicely done. Let's use them in a sentence. So we've got, is that your mm outfit? And I mm thought about it before. Hmm, is that your never outfit? Do we wear never outfits? I don't think so. But maybe it's a new outfit. Maybe your brother or sister passed it down to you and it's new to you. And I never thought about it before. Hmm, do you have something that you've maybe not thought about before? All right, excellent. So let's go through and practice. Now that we've warmed up our brains, let's practice some are controlled words. Now, we're just training our brains. These aren't things that we've not seen before, but we're looking for those letter, those spelling patterns in words because we wanna become extra fluent readers. So let's look at some of those uh, spelling patterns. I've got my corn spelling card to remind me that we're working on the or sound, and I've got my star st uh, spelling um, pattern card to remind me that we are doing the R um, pattern, the R sound. So let's look at some of the spelling patterns that each of these do. So the or can be spelled several different ways. For example, it can be spelled O-R, 
like in this word here, storm. And it can also be in the middle of this word, shortest. Do you see that O-R? Nice. And then O-R-E is typically the OR sound at the end of a word, like in shore or chores. Good. And then we've got O-U-R can also say OR, like in this word, poor, or this one here in the middle, source, source. Okay, and then O-A-R says OR, like roar and horse. Now, this is not like you're riding a horse. This is horse like your throat is horse. It's scratchy or sore. All right, and then R, like the star card, R, like in this word is spelled A-R like in start, and at the beginning of this word, argue. Nicely done. Okay, I wanna switch gears just a little bit, and I wanna talk to you about prefixes. And so, the, um, this week, we're looking at those groups of letters that are found at the beginning of the word. Well, when I say word, I'm talking about the base word or the root word. This, this is an actual word that can stand on its own and has meaning. So here are my three words that I have for, for today's practice. Paint, caution, and lock. Now these words all have their own meaning. You could just use them all by themselves. A prefix you can't use by itself. It has to be attached to a base word. So I have right here, it just tells us a group of letters added to the beginning of a word to change its meaning. So the prefix re means again. So if I have re and paint, and I wanna put that together, well, re means again, so it's going to be not just paint it, but I'm going to repaint it. I'm gonna paint it again. Now, pre, the prefix pre, means before. So if I have caution, but I'm gonna say, ooh, you need to take some precaution, that means before you do it, you might wanna put your seatbelt, your seatbelt would be a precaution. All right, and then un means not. So if I have the word lock, well, if I'm not locked, another way I could say it is adding the prefix un, and that changes lock to unlock. You see how we did that? Awesome job. Okay, so let's look at a story today. So I've got a little bit of a, a story. It's gonna be using some of those R-controlled vowels as well as some prefixes. Okay, let's see if we can spot them. It's kind of a fun story. So this one's called The Long Walk. Um, and it's Mara, she's going out on a long walk. And well, you just read with me, all right? Okay, nice and big. The Long Walk. Mara set off for a long walk. It was late in the day and she wore a coat. This was the part of the day she liked best. She liked to be outdoors before the day turned cold. The days were getting short. It would get dark early and there would be no light for a walk outside. Spring was nice, but Mara liked fall more. The trees were turning red and the sky was deep blue. She looked up and spotted four black dots. They were birds soaring in the sky. Mara knew that she would soon see the harvest moon. She took one last look and headed home. All right, so boys and girls, did we see any of those our controlled vowels that we've been practicing this week. Did you see them? I saw several of them. Did you see the word wore a coat? Yeah, even, even our main character, Mara, she's got an R controlled vowel. And how about short, even right here? Awesome, great job. All right, so I know that there's more but I'm gonna let you find them. I did put a little writing prompt. I always love to write to a story. So here's just something to think about. Write about your favorite time of the year. Could you write a story and maybe send it to me? I'd love to hear it. Okay, let's finish off 
with some idioms. I'm going to do it a little bit backwards today because I want to talk about what an idiom is first, right here. And that an idiom is simply a common expression that people use in conversation and that the overall meaning of an idiom is completely different than what the words mean. Okay, let's look and see if we can use some context clues to figure out some of these. All right, his diet went out the window during the holidays. Oh my golly, have you ever heard anybody talk about this, especially as we're going into the holiday season? What does it mean to go out the window? Did it need some fresh air? Maybe it didn't change? No. How about this one? Did it disappear? What do you think? If his diet went out the window, that's right, it disappeared. He stopped following his diet and he started eating all those yummy treats and snacks for the holidays. All right, one more. So your mom and dad were frustrated by the way you acted. You must have driven them up the wall. Okay, does it really mean that you jumped in a car and drove them up the wall? Maybe you made your parents climb? No. Maybe you made your parents excited? No. How about this one? Made your parents frustrated. Absolutely. And we know that because we can see right here that it says your mom and dad were frustrated. So we can use those context clues. All right. So I want to go through and just finish off on this Friday some of our idioms that we've looked at this week because, again, I think idioms are so much fun. They're such a silly way in our language that we communicate with one another. So I even put up here, idioms are a piece of cake. Even that's funny, right? Because we know that idioms are just words. They're not really actually pieces of cake. All right, I wanna make sure that I've got time to go through just these last two that are here, and then we're gonna revisit a few of them at the top. So how about this one right here? It kind of sounds a little on the scary side. It says, to kill two birds with one stone. Am I really hurting animals? Absolutely not. It just is an expression that means to solve two problems with one action. How about this one? My dad used to say this one all the time to me. He says, that costs an arm and a leg. Does that really mean that I have to take my arm and my leg off and pay it to somebody? No, it's just an idiom. It's just an expression to say that something is very expensive. So hit the hay, tie the knot, bent out of shape. All of these things are idioms that we've practiced all week long. And I'd love for you to practice some of those with your family members. It's been fantastic hanging out all week with you, practicing our R controlled vowels, our prefixes, and finally our idioms. I wanted to say thanks for hanging out with me. And remember, you're responsible for your learning success. So listen, ask questions, and share your ideas. Because together, we can do so much more. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday. Bye-bye. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.